So we've created our bangs growth group right here. And the next step is to go ahead and actually grow some hair out of it. So let me close this floating palette. And when that happens, our character will appear normal again. And then we get to come down to the next option. Let me condense this a little bit so we can see step number two, the growth controls. There is default growth links. You can adjust them before you generate the hairs or you can adjust them afterwards. Now, there's a difference going on here in the fact that we have guide hairs as something we're growing right now. The hairs that you style are actually kind of geometric proxies for the rest of the hair. And it tells when you populate all the hair what's going to happen in hair that lies next to the guide hairs. So for every square in the character's head, we're going to get a growth hair that comes out of that. So I'll click Grow Guide Hairs. Bingo, there they are. And well, this looks like somebody out of a 1980s rave club. So that's way too long. Let's go ahead and shorten these things up because the hair will also obey how long or the length of the guide hairs themselves. Now, this is all very regular. So we've got the ability to go ahead and add some length variance. We can go ahead and pull it back or down or to the sides if we want, or we can leave it just like that and move on to the next set, which is the styling controls. I'll do that. I'm going to come down and grab the little handlebar and pull this up so we get more of those styling controls here to work with. I'll call your attention to the fact that we grew guide hairs that we'll style with and control, but the actual hair that we'll see is 17 hairs. If I do a quick little render, it thinks about it, and we have this very sparse, mangy looking head right here that simply doesn't have enough hair along with it. To be honest, I can't tell you exactly why it says 17 hairs when we have more that are visible because there certainly aren't 17 per growth hair and there's more than 17 hairs in the head. I just always use that as a guide saying, well, 17 is not too many. And when we actually get ready to render our hair, we'll want something more in the neighborhood of about, oh, I don't know, 10,000. And that gives a good full head of hair type of look. We can control tip width. One thing that I always like to work with is clumpiness. That's the easiest way to go ahead and bring some kind of natural irregularity into the hair. And if we want to increase kink a little bit, we'll see that the guide hairs are now taking on a little bit of a life of their own, and we don't even have to touch them. We're just using the controls right here to do that for us. When it comes down to actually styling the hairs directly, we can go ahead and click Style Hair, and we do have the option to show populated hair if we want, so we can get a better idea of what's going on. And we have some tools to work with. One is the Select Hair tool, and that's how you can go ahead and select the specific guide hairs that you want to work on. So I click and drag across that. There's these little faint yellow points that let you know that area has been selected. And I can go ahead and translate these hairs, rotate them, scale them, deselect the hairs if I want, translate the hairs in and out, the typical controls you would think you would need here. And then we can control the strength from the root to the tip. So when we do the effect, and this is something you can change while you're working on it, you can have your actions change just the tip or actually just lay all the hair down from the roots. So I'll leave that where it is by its default. Let me go ahead and do something like translate hairs in and out. We can see that I'm moving them in and out. They're getting a little bit longer. They've kind of overlapped with the head. If I spin, and I'm not going to do a lovely job of hairstyling right here, but we can click and drag and make minor changes to some of those or spin them and get them going other directions. Basically, hairbrushes, combs, that type of thing is how these tools work. And it's flying way off to the side. When I close this window up, we have the ability to go ahead and increase our hair density. We're at 17 right now. Let's go ahead and just enter a manual number. Currently, the number showing is 432. And I think this relates to 17 guide hairs producing 432 actual hairs. If I go ahead and increase this to something like 5,000 and click OK, our preview updates, it looks like we have some more, but not a whole lot. Let's go ahead and render this and get a good idea of what's going on. Still fairly light. There's some options to deal with this. One is that depending on how close the camera is or far, you can adjust the root width, how thick they are on the head to kind of make that a little more full. So if I want, the root width is 1 right now. I can increase this to something like 1.5. The reason you would do this is so you don't have to keep running this up to hundreds of thousands of hairs when the camera may not call for that much detail. However, I'm going to double the amount of hair that we have there, 10,000. This fills in rather nicely. Go ahead and do another render real quick. Keyboard shortcut Command-R or Control-R if you're on the PC. 
starting to fill in, still fairly light. So we'll play this game back and forth, not for your benefit, but you would just keep going back and forth until you visually saw something you wanted. The styled hairs we have are kind of flying out to the side, so we'd want to select those and shorten those up. Working with hair is a very iterative process where you just try it, you work with it, and then you see if you like it. Now, once that's been set, you can style hair perfectly so it's ideal for a static scene, or you can go ahead and say, all right, now that I've got it styled where I want it, let's go ahead and do the dynamics for the scene. What this allows us to do, I'll drag this down so we can see it a little bit more, is that it actually calculates the weight of the hair, how long it is, and how much it should bend based on the stiffness we have in place. So if I choose Calculate Dynamics right now without adjusting any of these, it'll think for a second, and we get a little more of a natural, believable drape going on. This extends into basically an animation type of mode, calculated it for 30 frames. If we rotate around our scene a little bit, there we have some hair behaving relatively naturally and not going into the head or doing things it shouldn't. So in a nutshell, this is how you create basic hair and hair groups. Style it, you would go into the materials room and go ahead and change it. Pretty easy to work with, just takes a while to style it exactly the way you want it.